rates. Let's bring it up right now. We showed this earlier today, and this prepares us for Mario Draghi. I set up a, a four of the five countries at negative rates. Uh, Germany down there, the red line. Uh, but the green line is the United States. This is the difference. And what's so important here, Steve Whiting with us with Citigroup, is the duration out of negative rates. The Journal's got a great chart today of this. Germany out, Switzerland out. Denmark, not so much, but the length there out to 10 years of a negative rates is just as important as the depth of well, negative consider rates. Consider the fact that Germany has a relatively strong economy uh, and has low unemployment, and you get, uh, certainly for the government, much easier financial conditions and uh, deeper lows on interest rates. And there's a still the sense of credit risk across the European Union that's priced across these various bond markets. I mean, what does it do to real rates? In China, we have huge high inflation adjusted at rates. Does Eastern Europe get into the same challenge? Well, I think, you know, we just brought up Brazil for an example. And you just looked at the situation in Argentina where, you know, political transition and everyone is very, very comfortable with it. You know, the world wants uh, a return and the world is very happy to go and, you know, finance uh, a lot of the world if they can get a real return. So this can have significant right. spillovers to emerging markets, which have suffered a great deal yeah. uh, in you know many of these years, uh, recent years. And there are still significant issues. Uh, you mentioned China. Certainly the mm -hmm. oil price drop is a very big one. But uh, the willingness uh, for savers around the world to now go after and finance uh, for a positive return others around the world, this will hold down global interest rates. You know, hold and not just in, 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 in a dampening uh, there as well, as Francine mentioned. Let's bring up the chart again. Francine, uh, a year and a course for those of you in the terminal. Willem Bowder emailed in this morning and said, where can I find it? Uh, Professor Bowder, G, uh, hashtag BTV 530 go is where you can find this. This this, this it's, it's just it's just a joy. Look like at it. that chart. Rainbow it's gorgeous. Chart. It is. It's like a rainbow chart. I like it a lot. Willis, when you look at the rainbow chart and when you look at negative rates, I guess the only thing that Mario Draghi really has going for him is that he's had warnings from the Bank of International Settlements. He's seen what happened to Japan. So if he does go further into negative, he's going to structure it in a way that he will try not to hurt banks. Well, I'm going to defer to, to Steve on, uh, on central bank politics, but I think that the larger undercurrent here, both economically and politically, is uncertainty. There are so many variables in the air for Europe right now. You know, we were talking about oil prices in the last hour and how oil prices, a lower price, should help Europe. But the fact is that lower oil prices are having a very destabilizing effect in the Middle East which is increasing pressure on Europe in a lot of very obvious ways. These are the kinds of things that Mario Draghi and all central bankers are having to take into account when they make these long-term decisions. I would bear in uh, mind Steve. that... Sorry, please go ahead. No, go for it. No, I just I bear in mind that in this particular decision that's coming up, this is not like a decision you'll see in June or next week, for example, whether the Fed will raise rates 25 basis points. You know, there is an alphabet soup of different programs uh, that the ECB uh, has put into place to stimulate the Eurozone economy. Uh, and a lot of these things are possible policy levers in addition to new uh, levers that we might see today. And this goes back to where the U.S. was uh, back in 2009 and 2010 mm -hmm. uh, when it was in an earlier stage and there are many of these programs still in play in the U.S. case. I don't want to pin you down. Maybe you, you haven't read the, your latest research. What is the Citibank call and what we see today? Uh, to expand uh, QE, the size of purchases, to mm -hmm. go 10 basis points deeper into negative rates. Really? 10 rate. basis points deep? Yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. But again, the uh, variety and probably to extend the program. Now, there's a, like I just said, there's much more uncertainty about what uh, Mario Draghi mm -hmm. will do. And it's important here is then the predictability of the central bank was seriously harmed with the December decision compared to where, where the, okay. the announcements were in October. And predictability okay. is important. We got to run. Steve Whiting with us with Citigroup. Willis Sparks with us with Eurasia Group.